this is really going to freak people. I want to hear me talk about it. I read a book called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. And he's big on like the teachings of like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius and some of the other Stoics. The thing I love about it is, like I said, I'm a big no, no complaints without solutions, no problems without solutions. And that, that's really what the Stoics kind of built their teachings on. It, they didn't teach you to run around things. They taught you to run right through them. So if my obstacle is standing in front of me, let's say it's this bottle of water, I'm not going to go around it. I'm going to go right through it and crush that bottle right. to get the obstacle out of the way and to get the outcome that I want. So when I read that book, it made me understand the only way forward is through. Mm. And that's it. There's no way to go around it. And you guys probably go through things in your lives to where you're like, I don't really want to deal with this right now. But then it sits there, right? And it festers and it grows into something bigger than it is. Shakespeare also used a phrase called eat the frog. So I had that on my whiteboard in my office, and people were like, eat the frog. Like, <laughs> and I would make some kind of goofball joke like I usually do, but it means like in the morning you want to do the toughest thing first. If you eat the frog in the morning, you don't have anything else to really worry about throughout the course of the day. So going back to your question in regards to like the Stoics, the only way forward in life is through. And that doesn't mean you have to do it by yourself. You can bring other people with you in that journey to help build you up, to help fill your bucket to where you can get through those obstacles. That's a big one. And I would say probably the best book I've ever read is by a, game, a guy named Don Miguel Ruiz, and he wrote a book called The Four Agreements. And I've talked to you guys about that before. The Four Agreements are be impeccable with your word, which is tough sometimes, but that comes right from the Bible, the word of the book. Uh, don't make assumptions, which you guys know is tough, because if you don't have all the facts, it's easy to jump to conclusions and make assumptions. Yeah. The third one is tough, and, and this is something you guys can learn and anybody watching this. Don't take things personal. If someone says something or does something to you, it's usually an issue they're having in their own lives. So you can't, you can't take that personally. And then the fourth one is always do your best, regardless of what it is that day. I guarantee you, everybody that's going to watch this and you guys, there's probably some days where you're just not feeling it. If that's your best that day, it's okay to be good with that. Give yourself a little bit of grace and understand you're not going to kill it every day. But if you do what your best is that day, then it's a positive. So that's... I try to take as much positivity in as I can because I listen to a lot of people here and their problems and their issues, what they're going through, because I love people and I love helping them. So what I try to get from books is coping, coping mechanisms for myself and for the people that I love and the people that I deal with. So uh, you carry kind of the weight of the world sometimes. It feels probably on your shoulders. How do you get past that and realize that, you know, these struggles or you know the struggles of my students because obviously you're going to want to take on the struggles of your athletes and mm -hmm. your students and stuff here right how do you get past that and realize that you know i have to at the end of the day close the door go home you know be a father come back to school and deal with you know all of this and still kind of in a way be a dad here at cc too you just jump in mm -hmm. with both feet if you're going to do something you dive in with both feet so i know it's part of it's part of my job description i probably do more psychology work in my job than, I, than anything else <laughs> with our kids their families faculty members alums you name it right. it honestly it doesn't really feel like the weight of the world because i love what i do there isn't a day that i wake up that i'm not like i'm i'm dreading coming to cc or coming to work snow days maybe because like you guys all get to sleep in and so do our teachers but for me like i'm usually in by 8 30 dealing with madness yeah. but to be great at anything you and this is it's it's tough to learn but degree to be great at anything you can't have balance something is going to suffer if you really want to be great at something there's something that's going to suffer so you just have to figure out people talk about what's on their plates all the time right mm -hmm. i like to look at it like this like my main course on my plate is my family mm -hmm. everything else outside of that is an appetizer including my job so once i was able to get married and have kids i realized finally what was really on my plate and i could kind of move everything else off to the side so it's just mindset. That's all it is. No matter how intensive a job you're in, you think of some of these surgeons that are saving people's lives and, and stuff like that. I mean, that's pressure. Mm -hmm. What we do here is just lead with love. So if you, if you enter it with the right mindset, it doesn't feel like it's the weight of the world. Like I try to give myself as much grace as possible. I know where my gaps are. I know what I'm good at. I know what I struggle with, but I find people to bring into my circle that that help make it whole and help help make it a full seven course meal if I want it to be. Mm -hmm. So it's just mindset and, and trying to stay positive. Yeah, and it's super important to have an open mind and a strong mind. You don't want your mind to be dragged down by your doubts. You gotta always stay positive and push forward. And going back to the books, um, one of the books I'm reading is 
choose or uh, your five next moves by yeah. Patrick Beth David, and and one of the chapters is you can't do it on your own. There's the myth of the solopreneur, right? A solopreneur is an entrepreneur who works on their own, right? But you need to build a team around you. So, what would you say and recommend to all the people listening? How would they build a team around them to help them accomplish their goals? Humility. You have to realize what you're not good at. If you want to be a solopreneur, you can do that's great. You're your own boss, but every single decision lands on you. So, like you said, when you feel like the weight of the world's on your shoulders, who do you have to go to? You don't have your HR person to go to or somebody else that's a mentor of yours that you're working with or that you can grill with questions. So you have to have that humility to realize, I'm not good at this. i got to pull somebody in that helps shore this up for me, like me. This will come as no surprise to some of the adults who might see this. I'm not a fan of paperwork. Like, I can't stand being a swivel chair leader. I can't stand being in my office. I want to be out with the roots of our tree and our people to make sure everything else is strong. So, And like I said, I know what I'm not good at. So I, I, I have an associate AD who's fantastic at paperwork and the detailing stuff. And I celebrate him all the time. That's another thing you have to do is you got to celebrate your people. If someone pumps you up and fills your bucket, tell them. Tell them you see them. There, there's something to be said by just telling somebody, hey, man, like I told you guys, I see what you guys are doing. I asked you guys if I could be a part of this because mm-hmm. I saw what you were doing and how cool it was. Just telling somebody you see them and what they're doing I can't tell you how much of a bucket filler that is. So you do have to have some humility if you want to build the right team around you because you got to know what you're not good at. Right. It's really that simple. Some people are too egotistical and think, like, I can do this all on my own. I want to be my own boss. Well, a lot of responsibility and heat comes along with that. Right, right, right. How do you get to the point where, you know, and I, I this probably takes a very long time, but how do you get to the point where you are – focused and you you realize in life that you're here to serve others and I feel like you've gotten to that point you know mm-hmm. right where you're it was there a certain age or a time after you're you know at CC where you're like you know what my goal is now to help others and my goal is to be here to support other people around me. well you reminded me earlier that I'm 50 in two years so I do have a little <laughs> bit of time left like you said so thank God I, I've got two more years to pour in before I might as well just cash the chips in um, <laughs> It, it, I'm telling you, it just goes back to mind, repetitive mindset mm-hmm. is really what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm so thankful to wake up in the morning, to open my eyes and realize no matter what happened the day before, two days before, weeks before, months before, years before, I can't change that. Yep. But if I wake up in the morning, I have another chance to start back at zero. Mm-hmm. So it's really finding like little mindset hacks to where you write your own ship. Because I, I can tell you, super emotional, I'm super sensitive. Mm-hmm. I hate to admit this, but I will just because I'll open up a little bit. But, like, there's music that makes me cry. There's yeah. movies that I sit and watch with my kids, like mm-hmm. the latest Ghostbusters. Like, I don't know if you guys saw it. Is it good? It's Is it pretty good? good. There's another one coming out. My kids are psyched. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but there was a specific, we're, we're at the movies watching this, and one of the old characters comes back as a ghost. And that reminded me of my childhood, and I sit and I look at my 8-year-old and 5-year-old, yeah. and I'm tearing up watching mm-hmm. Ghostbusters. And I'm like, <laughs> what the heck is wrong with me? But I realize, like, now... The older I get, I guess 48 is not that old, but I feel like I'm getting older. But if you're not here to serve, what kind of example are you setting? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No matter how strong you are in your faith, whether you're Catholic, Muslim, it doesn't matter what you are. Our goal here is to be servant leaders because we get so much given back to us. What are we giving back? We have a beautiful school. We have great teachers, great people, mentors, classmates, Shamrock Brothers. Mm -hmm. We have all of that given to us and poured into us. What can we give back to each other? Even if it's the smallest thing, me telling you, Tyler, the one day you saved me up in the press box, one of the first times we met, we couldn't get the board going, and you fixed it within a matter of minutes. And I'm like, this is a guy I need to bring into the circle, which we did immediately, and we started working it from there. That was, what, three years ago? Yeah. I mean, think of how quick that journey went. Now you're sitting here your senior year, right? I mean, that, that feels like it was yesterday to me. Fourteen and a half days left. Yeah. It's crazy to think, think about yeah. that. That's crazy. Kind of crazy. There's going to be guys in your class that are excited about that, too. And then I can see it sitting in the crowd at graduation. They walk across that stage. They get the handshake and the diploma, and then it hits them. I didn't give back enough. I wish I would have done more. I wish I would have gotten involved more. Mm-hmm. So there's no time limit on serving. Mm-hmm. You can do that all the way until you say your last prayer and you go to heaven, hopefully, Mm -hmm. but there's no time limit on you to serve. So, and it's just such a a great way to live your life. I would rather give more than I ever receive. I'm, Mm -hmm. as much as I like to help people, I know that in giving to them, I'm helping myself because 
it's something that I enjoy to do. So you just, it's just a repetitive mindset. Like I'm gonna get up, what can I do to help our people today? What can I do to help somebody else today? Because I've already been given so many gifts, I have to pour back into other people. Like I feel like it's something that I'm called to do. So once you flip your mindset, there's nothing you can't do. It's, it's about mm -hmm. leaving that legacy. Legacies, honestly, that I've become to realize is very important. It's more important than mm -hmm. how much money you make, you know, because mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, people will remember your last name and your family last name and mm -hmm. how much of an impact you have on society. It's probably the most important thing I'd say.